Welcome back to the Right Way Sports Network YouTube channel. My name is Jake Circus. I'm the lead NFL and NFL draft analyst here at TWSN. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the Saints Box Sunday Night Football matchup from just a few days ago. This game saw Tom Brady get shut out for just the first time since 2006, acting Saints head coach and Saints defensive coordinator Dennis Allen has had Tom Brady's number since Brady came to Tampa Bay last year, joining the likes of Steve Spagnola and Jack Del Rio as guys who consistently have given Tom Brady fits over the years. But what's the reason for this? In this video, I'm going to explain how there's no singular recipe to stopping Tom Brady, but with the right personnel, a four-man rush, and just a little bit of luck, you can damn sure frustrate the GOAT. All right, first play we're gonna look at. Now, this is the only clip that's in bad quality, so I apologize for that, but it's third down and five on the Bucks' first drive, and we're looking at the end zone cam here. We're gonna focus a lot on the Saints defensive line and their pass rushers, who are also their linebackers, and the different looks that they show. They ask a lot in those linebackers and their pass rushers, especially when up against an offense like Tampa that has five elite pass catchers, but also five elite pass catchers who can block. So here, so here New Orleans shows a mug look with uh, double A gap pressure with these two linebackers, and both of these backers are gonna rush through the A gap but it's just a four-man pressure. This 3-4 linebacker right here is Carl Granderson, and he's going to be manned up uh, out of the backfield with Leonard Fournette. Uh, so third down and five, Brady knows that Leonard Fournette's the hot read here. And look at the way Carl Granderson pursues that. This is, this, is a, this is the hot read. Brady knows Lenny's the hot read here on third and five. He's going to get it off. And this is 6'5", 265, making that play out of the backfield. Carl Granderson making this play, pursuit, and tackle against Leonard Fournette. This next one, first down, opening play of the Bucks second drive. They're trailing 3-0 already. The Saints are in a nickel 4-2-5 look. They've got Malcolm Jenkins here in the box playing that nickel linebacker role. One of the key things in this game is to stop Rob Gronkowski, and Jenkins did an unbelievable job stopping Gronk all game. So Tampa's going to set up a play action, five route concept to get Chris Godwin open on this crossing route over the middle right under those two high safeties. This is a two-way high-low read crosser with Evans clearing out on the go. Jenkins is also going to be manned up on Gronk's table route uh, out of the backfield. But the key here is C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Pre-snap, it looks like he's going to be following Chris Godwin on the crosser. But once Godwin starts his break, he takes away, he sucks down to take away Leonard Fournette. So watch C.J. Gardner-Johnson right here. He's going to suck down and get Leonard Fournette, which forces Brady to make that tight window throw. So he, he gives way, lets Paulson and Debo uh, man up against Godwin over the middle. So he's going, to, he's going to suck down right when Leonard Fournette makes his break. Brady's looking at this crosser over the middle. Pressure gets there. It's a tight window throw. Adebo closes out. It's a high throw. Good play by the second, by the, the rookie, rookie out of Stanford. Uh, I believe he was undrafted. High throw, tight window, good coverage from Paul Sanadibo there. Quick play here, third down and five. Watch this pressure that the Saints get. Four-man pressure, that's always been the key to stopping Tom Brady. The Saints have great defensive line personnel. They get two free runners. Alex Kappa gets beat on the inside. Left tackle Donovan Smith gets beat on the outside. Brady gets absolutely sandwiched. It's a sack and a fourth down punt for Tampa, Saints get off the field again. First and 10 now from plus territory for Tampa. First time all game they've gotten the Saints territory. Similar concept here for the Bucs. I mean, Brady is running, he's been running wide cross for two decades now. He's gonna isolate CJ Gardner-Johnson with Cameron Great here on the wide crosser. It's a cover three look for New Orleans. Uh, both linebackers stay down to guard the check down. There's a little separation right here on this wide cross. But Gardner Johnson's always there on this play. The pressure is going to get there. Now watch how Brady has to throw this ball. He has to throw it kind of with his shoulder aimed kind of towards the sideline. It's a low throw. Gardner Johnson gets there to make this play. Schematically, this is exactly what Brady wants. His tight end with separation on the crosser. But the pressure gets there. It's coming right now. Brady has to kind of lean down. And there's just not enough separation for this ever to be an easy throw. So good technique by Gardner Johnson. To stay to stick with Cameron Great here all the way through on this crosser and force that another tight window throw from Tom Brady. 
Second down and seven to go. The Saints are in a little risky cover two man press here in the red zone. Now, what this means is that since it's only five man protection, every route is being ran downfield except for one, which would be Gronk's little option choice route here lined up as the inline tight end. So he's going to be on that option choice route. And if completed, there's no help. Everyone else is manned up. So Brady knows this. He's going to be looking for these double posts here, one by Scotty Miller, and then the other on the slot by Tyler Johnson. So with the Saints playing middle of the field open coverage here, uh, the, what Brady's going to try to look for those double posts. But once he snaps the ball, he knows Gronk is the one here. Gronk is the first read. So Gronk's going to choose to run the basic instead of the stop hitch. Quan Alexander gets his hands in there to make the play. Now he just doesn't have time to look for those, look for these posts. Let's watch this one more time. There's just not enough time. The pocket's going to collapse. He's never, never, ever even really looking down the field for those two skinnies. But Gronk's going to run that basic right over the middle. Quan Alexander, great fight with his hand to get his hands in there against the six foot seven Rob Gronkowski. Really good play by the veteran linebacker to, to knock that ball away. Next play, third down and seven. The Saints are in a too high safety look. Uh, they decide this very well. They're going to be in some type of cover seven here once Tom Brady takes a snap. Now, Gronk is going to be bracketed uh, on this in right. He's going to be guarded by this linebacker and this safety as well. Evans is going to be manned up at the top with Lattimore, of course. And then just everyone else filling their zone. Now, Brady is going to get immediately pressured here, which ruined this play. Again, four-man rush. Now, Let's watch this, this pressure one more time. So the pressure gets there, obviously. Uh, Brady's going to get sacked immediately. So that pressure really ruined this play, but Gronk's going to be on this uh, in right to the sideline. Scotty Miller's going to be on the post of the end zone. So it's middle of the field open coverage, cover two, which means Brady knows he's going to read this weak side, sorry, the this, this strong side safety defender. So he's going to drop down and bracket Gronk which is where that cover seven comes in. And then Scotty Miller is going to be open. He, look, he has his hands up. He knows he's open, but Brady is already getting sacked once Scotty Miller takes his break. So there is nowhere for Brady to go. Everyone's filling their zone. This route's being covered. Mike Evans is being covered over the middle. This is where Brady's looking, this two-man game with Miller and Gronk. The safety, the strong side safety, makes a great decision to come down and bracket Gronk, double-team him. While Brady has to get this ball away to Scotty Miller, that's, 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 that's where he needs to throw it. But as Scotty Miller gets open, Brady's already getting sacked. So great pressure, four-man pressure once again from the Saints. Good cover seven call by Dennis Allen to bracket Gronk and to leave Miller open, even though Brady can't make that pass. Third down and six, approaching the end of the first half. I mean, come on, this is just bullying an old man at this point. The Saints are going to call it stunt blitz pressure. It gets through. Brady has to step out and get away, but he's brought down by Marcus Davenport. Let's watch this in full time. Great stunt on the inside by the Saints. They gets there easily. Davenport gets the stunt and brings Tom Brady down. This is just bullying at this point. Great call by Dennis Allen. Great execution by the Saints defensive line. Once again, they're only sending four guys here. They have a ton of guys lined up showing blitz, press coverage, and they only send four here as they have this defensive end lined up against Leonard Fournette. So they're disguising that, and then they're only sending four guys, so they have seven guys in coverage at all times. They rarely sent more than four this game. That's the key to, to stopping Tom Brady, is disguising the four-man pressure and actually getting through as the stunt gets there. Watch it one more time. Great stunt by Marcus Davenport, bringing down Tom Brady. So this is a third down and two. Now, I think this was my favorite play of the game from the Saints defense. The Bucs are in a tight set. The Saints go man coverage across the board, man coverage here, man coverage here, man coverage here. So it's um, cover one man across the board for New Orleans. Brady's going to look at these double crossers. There's actually three crossers right here, but the read is the high low. This is Scotty Miller and then obviously Gronk. So, that, so that's where Brady's looking here to look where DeMario Davis goes, to look where uh, this high safety goes. I believe that's Marcus Williams. So once we snap this ball, uh, he's look, look, remember, he's isoing to Mario Davis. That's his read. Davis stays down to guard this shallow cross. Brady makes a smart play to try to fit this ball into Rob Gronkowski, who has a little bit of separation on his man. What does Davis do? He damn tips the ball anyways uh, to stop this play. 
throw comes in high and a good play by that safety to break it up. So I believe DeMario Davis does tip this ball. In fact, I'm pretty sure he does. Unbelievable play by him. The throw comes in wobbly because it was tipped. Gronk has no way to catch this ball, and the Bucs are going to punt again. So one time again in full, DeMario Davis' linebacker is going to sink down, guard this Scotty Miller crosser, and he tips the ball anyways. The throw from Tom Brady, and it comes in way high and wobbly, and the Bucs have to punt. So this was a little discombobulation from Tampa here. Huge third down and 10. It starts as a max protection. I mean, obviously, look at how many guys New Orleans is showing in the box. But New Orleans does something interesting to create this stunt that gets through the A-gap. So we're going to focus on the weak side here. This is Quan Alexander, who's showing B-gap pressure. He's going to take one step forward, and then he's going to leak out and guard this swing route by Leonard Fournette, or this table route by Leonard Fournette out of the backfield. So Marcus Davenport, his assignment is to basically block the left guard, Ali Marpet. Look at Marcus Davenport right here. He's basically going to go block the left guard, Ali Marpet, which in hand, and well, because it's Marcus Davenport, that tension now goes to the clog middle. So the center's assignment, Ryan Jensen right here, is to block Marcus Davenport. So when Davenport goes to left guard, Jensen has to follow him which frees up this stunt right through the gap. Wide open D tackle here, David Onyemeta. Brady never has a chance. Let's watch this one more time. The center, Ryan Jensen, manned up against Marcus Davenport. Davenport goes straight to the left guard to try to block him. It frees up the defensive tackle on a wide open stunt right through that gap. It gets to Brady in terms of backside coverage. Uh, Gardner Johnson has his man bags here on the deep end. Jalen Darden basically knows Brady has no chance to get the ball away. He's, he's not doing anything. This is an unbelievable uh, design by Dennis Allen, sacking Tom Brady on this stunt. There's no name for this, but it is a stunt through that gap and Brady never has a chance. Last play, this is the game clinch. So we're going to focus on two things here because the Saints are doing a lot of stuff. But the one that matters is this. C.J. Gardner-Johnson manned up in the slot with Scotty Miller. The Bucs, once again, are going to run double crossers. Scotty Miller is going to be on a crosser. Um, that's, this play is going to get intercepted. So the pocket's going to collapse on the weak side. Brady's going to be forced to run to his right. So the pocket collapses. Brady forces to escape. Now let's pay attention to the way Gardner-Johnson is playing this crosser. So we're going to reset sort of, he's, he's in press coverage. We can call that press coverage for sure. He's going to let Scotty Miller kind of get by him once he gets his break. He's going to back off a little, basically playing trail technique here uh, against that crosser. Now, once Johnson, CJ Gardner Johnson, sees Brady look his way, Johnson licking his chops, man. He knows this ball is coming to him at this moment. He knows it. He knows this ball is coming to him. He lets up and knows he can intercept this pass whenever he wants. Once the ball goes in the air, Johnson hammers at it and gets the pick to seal the game. This is absolutely textbook cornerback play. The Saints took away what Brady does best, standing in the pocket by getting four-man pressure, forcing him to create, which rarely goes well, and with the dynamic DBs the Saints have, they were able to do this all game long.